What's up everyone? Today we are talking about four beginner builds to help you get you started in Albion Online. These are good builds if you're starting a fresh character and want to get going, if you're brand new to the game, as they're going to be cheap. They're going to be reliable in a lot of different forms of content, both PvE and PvP. And it can kind of just really help get you going with the hunt and break the bank. It kind of build up your fame, build up your resources to be able to get more expensive and unique builds as you learn the game. So again, these builds are all purpose. You can do a lot of different content in to get started and learn it. These builds are also intended to be cheap. You can farm PvE and fame. You can go to the mist to farm, maybe corrupted dungeons and arenas. They're all purpose builds. Uh, jack of all trades, if you will. Some of these will not be the best of a certain activity you're doing. So I would not recommend going full lethal on these without adjustments according to the mode you are playing or your own personal play style. But these will be good builds to get you started, farm fame, and hopefully have crossover with other builds that help you with that. This will also be a minimum of one weapon type uh, or one weapon per type. So we're going to do a mage build, a hunter build, and a warrior. And then we're actually going to do an extra on top of that. Now, getting into this, almost all these builds are going to use a classic combo. And that classic combo, you probably have seen it, is hunter hood mercenary and a plate boot there's a reason for these these are really good for all types of content and they are cheap they are very very cheap a lot of builds we use this lineup because it is like for the cheap meta you know there are probably you no know, equivalents of these gear that are considered better um but they're more expensive and so you can kind of use these pieces of armor and use it you no, know, get your fame up to 100 on these, get your spec up to 120 on these, all that stuff. You know, really master these pieces of armor in terms of the experience and be able to use them for 20 different builds. And so you don't have to level those up. You can instead you can build up your weapons and have a variety. So you can swap around weapons a lot because these are so kind of core for like the cheap meta. So as a beginner, if you aren't trying to drop a ton of money, these are like your bread and butter, right? To be competitive in PvP and not spend too much. These will also work well in PvE with some adjustments depending on what you're doing. Adjustments being you know, in the actual abilities you choose on the armor piece or maybe some slight alterations of what armor you're using if you have a little extra money. Um, so, however, the Hunter Hood, the Reflect ability, the Retaliate, um, is very impactful with fighting. Um, is very, very strong with that. You know, having that Reflect, you know, increasing your damage resistance will help you win trades. You know, in PvE, you can run that or you can swap over to the energy regain so you can pound through PvE content and not to worry about your energy costs. Um, the Mercenary Jacket is a very strong classic for the Bloodlust ability. Uh, restoring 85 health whenever you deal direct damage within the next 6 seconds. So you can really restore your health quickly both in PvP and PvE. And Soldier Boots kind of give you some options depending on what you're doing. Um, the classic rejuvenating sprint. This is especially good uh, in both PvP and PvP. You just get your health back. Helps no stay and sustain while also getting movement speed. But you can also swap over to the dodge ability because this gives you an iframe to dodge no effects like a corrupted staff E on you. You can dodge it to not take damage. Stuff like that, right? And so it gives you a variety of things you can do while sticking with the same piece of gear and not having to swap up. So overall, it's a staple cheap lineup to help build up your economy. And as you learn one of these builds, you can have more expensive substitutions that we'll talk about once we get into the actual weapon lineups. But these are kind of the staple armor pieces we're going to be starting off with. Now, for the first build we're going to be talking about, this is for the mage you know, weapon archetype. And we're going to be talking about the curse staff. Curse staff, a very, very strong weapon um, and a very, very honestly kind of easy weapon to use. Um, the Cursed Staff, for those who know, it's a mage weapon. Um, you'll be wanting to use either the Vile Curse or the Cursed Sickle. The Vile Curse is really good if you're in the 1v1 situation. You apply the Vile Curse Charge. It deals damage over time. It stacks up to 4. So you can apply it on the dummy there. Apply it again. Apply it again. And apply it again. And so that is now this going around. Now dealing damage every few seconds. And, you know that will pair into stuff on the other end. This is really good 1v1s. If you have a little bit more group content or for like PvE, like clearing dungeons, Curse Sickle is be better. The reason why is because it does a similar thing uh, with the Vile Charges, except it kind of shoots out. So it's not a guaranteed hit, but you can hit multiple things with it. Like see here, I was able to get all three of them and it applies the sack on the way in and on the way out. So it lets you 
kind of build up those damages on more people. So if you're doing the group content, it's very strong. Um, then you also have the armor piecer, which you know, reduces damage, resistance, deals damage. Very, very useful. Um, and then the big thing uh, why you run this is the death curse. So this is why, again, very cheap weapon. Ignore the cost. It says 17k SMA market value for a 4-2. Again, if you're a beginner, you're probably going to go with like a 4-1. But you get the chance to kind of build up these stacks on players. And then you apply the E to a target, right? You see that big skull over it. And you see there's a timer that ticks up here. And then it deals a burst of damage. So the way it works is depending on the amount of charges you have. So ideally you want to get four charges. Let me apply the curse. And then after five seconds, it deals damage. At four charges, the base damage is 1346. So very simple for you no know, PvP. You can get charges on people and really burst them down. It's a very beginner friendly weapon because it's all pretty straightforward and just, you know, getting dots on people and then hitting with a big finish. Um, and then, you know, as you are clearing and stuff and fighting, you can use your mercenary jacket to kind of keep your health up because it applies to all damage you deal. So fight that. Very, very staple build. We're walking Mist Caller secondary uh, for the cooldown modifier because we want to be able to spam the cues, whichever one you're doing, as much as possible. And then for jacket, uh, or uh, sorry, for cape, you know, rock a flat cape, no, no special cape if you don't have the money. If you have the money, I like the Carleon cape. Um, it you know, lets you reset the cooldown of your weapon's first ability slot. And so when you have it up, you see right there, my Q, it didn't go on cooldown. Now it's on the five second cooldown. So it allows you to get an edge um, right away to basically immediately get a bunch of stacks down to be able to get your E down faster. You know, and getting your E down faster because you're at four stacks means that you'll get the E back sooner to do it again if you need to, right? So that's the bare, no, bread and butter with that. The next build is Nature Staff. Nature Staff is a very versatile weapon to master because you can use it in aggressive PvP as more of a DPS kind of CC role, or you could use it as like a full healer, right? You have a lot of options with this. This is also, in my opinion, Nature Staff is probably the best solo PvE build. You will see a lot of people who get high spec on this and go and will do like solo group dungeons by themselves, go and solo the static dungeons because there's so much to sustain Then, while also not being a full healer that can deal damage that you can you know, clear out those mobs and be able to do it. So this is the build. Um, you'll notice we swapped the Hunter Hood uh, for the Mage Cow. This is for PvE. If you're doing PV, I'd swap it to this because this will give you a bit more damage that you might be lacking otherwise with the fire burn um, to help you with clearing things out. Um, for the PV side, you can do this for PvP. We'll rock the thorns ability, uh, which deals damage. Uh, whatever the ability deals damage applies a thorn charge and it slows enemies and you can recast it a bunch. So you can, as you're clearing out mobs for PvPing, you can you know use that and be able to be able to deal damage and slow them and just kind of keep that keep that up for the w you're going to be rocking is going to be revitalize um you can run bramble bless if you're feeling whatever way but revitalize is nice just are able to revise a target ally this can be for pvp you know healing your ally or mpv healing your ally or for yourself you channel heal as much as your energy allows it's a very strong ability to kind of keep your sustain up. And the same with E, um, you can kind of slam down and get some health back. Now, if you have some more money, you can get some of the different nature staffs that are going to have a different E that might be a bit more useful for this build. Um, however, as you can see, it pairs well with the thorn charges because it will root enemies. And so if you're PvPing, you can get some thorn charges down. Now do this, and they're rooted. And so this is a very good combo that you can go as your team engages, lay your thorns down, and then you no know, pop your E on them if they're trading, get their health back up, and then they're, yeah, rooted. So uh, a very strong combo can be very aggressive, also defensive. For solo content, you no, know, you can rock the you no know, bloodlust with mercenary jacket. If you have some more money and you're doing more group content, you can also rock hellion jacket for the aura. I like to do that a lot in PvP. Uh, especially like in arenas or something as it kind of just lets me be able to give health to other people and if, you know multiple enemies like try to hop on top of me I can just like heal past it and you know get some roots down get some damage down and just be like sustained and then they just don't anything um, if you're PvPing I would probably like if you want to keep the mage cow you can you can also swap to the forest field and knock people back if they're trying to jump you while PvPing or you can stick with the hunter hood uh, for the retaliate while PvPing um, 
Yeah, and then for the, you'll be rocking a mist collar as well for the cooldown reduction with this. And then I actually would recommend rocking a Limhurst cape. Um, you restore 80% of your max energy over 9 seconds when you drop below 40%. And so that helps you with you know, being able to spam your abilities as much as you do. Um, it lets you, you know, be able to get your mana back a lot faster. Um, and not like worry too much about that, right? So... Get your mana back up, keep your spam up, and survive. Again, very strong build for like you no know, just solo PVEing and for PvP. A very universal build that you're gonna get a lot of use out of if you enjoy this. Moving into a very classic build. This time we have spear, the one-handed spear. Um, a very, very good solo build, has a lot of damage, very safe and clearing, very strong in 1v1s, a very kind of staple build. Um, you'll be rocking the Hunter Hood, Merc Jacket, Soldier Boots with this as well. We toss on the Avalonian Cape. You can also rock an Undead Cape, just kind of you no know, preference on which you want a little bit more damage or more survivability. And then we rock the Spear with the Torch for the cooldown and the attack speed bonus. Uh, it's very simple. It is a, you know, you poke and prod. You have a Q that deals damage and slows um, and gets a Spear Charge, which increases your normal attack power. So I got three charge right now. I'm doing 79 on these autos. And I'll let these reset real fast so you can see the difference. And without them, 43. So you can build up charges, deal damage, and then with your W, it's a forest, just a cone of spears. Very strong for the 1v1s, clearing out solo dungeons, being able to progress quickly. A very staple build um, that you would see a lot of success with if you're taking damage. You know, you can quickly heal up between that, your W, get your health back up. And then the E, uh, Reckless Charge, it lets you kind of jump in, knock enemies up, and then depending on the amount of Spirit Charges you have, the amount of damage you see, I'm at one Spirit Charge, two Spirit Charges now, it will deal more damage. This is a very bread and butter 1v1 build. This is very good if you're trying to learn how to do corrupted dungeons. If you're in the mist trying to get some 1v1 fights, if you're just progressing in PvE dungeons trying to have good damage and sustain, very classic build, would highly recommend. It's a good one if you have interest in the spear to be able to kind of learn the play style, the damage and everything uh, before you were to kind of hop into other spear builds. And lastly, we have arguably, in my opinion, it's up there with Nature Staff. They're probably tied for the best solo content builds. We have Axe builds, specifically Battle Axe. Now, again, you can, when you get more money, more fame, if you want to try it, you get swap over to the Bear Paws or the Great Axe, the Hand of Core, whatever you're doing, right? But the Battle Axe is a very cheap and very reliable build. You can hop on these with no Tier 4, Tier 5 gear and go do solo Tier 7 dungeons and be perfectly fine because of the sustain and what you're able to do, right? So, for this build, um, right now, for PvE content, you'd want the Rending Spin on the Q. Uh, as you're learning out, the reason why I have this one is because, you know, eventually when you get higher levels on your axe, on this character, I actually don't have the higher levels. If I was on my East character, I could show you. Um, but it applies the Bleed Stacks, deals a lot of damage, and eventually when you get a higher level, um, you'll get the big ability that you see everyone use, the Rending Rage, which lets you swipe twice and then you leap out of target and root them. And it deals bleed, it deals damage. It's the better version of these abilities. But in the meantime, as you clear through in PvP and PvE, you can do this. Get your bleed stacks on targets. If you're doing some type of 1v1 content, then you can also just do the Rending Strike and not have to worry about kind of hitting the AoE around you. But instead, just have a one auto, get the bleed down guarantee it right for the w we're rocking adrenaline boost for the movement speed and attack speed this pairs hand in hand with not only just getting damage down but pairs hand in hand with the bloodlust from the mercenary jacket because you're able to kind of when you need to if you are low hp you can charge in with your bloodlust you know pop your q and then have your w going and so as you see, if I pop Bloodlust, I pop my W, I keep going boom, 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 right? Like, I'm healing so fast, getting a lot of tickens with that as I'm dealing damage. And then the E, this is why you would run Battle Axe, not only for the cheap aspect, but the E gives you a lot of sustain because the amount of bleeds you have on them, the amount of self-healing you get off of it. So you can go through, get your bleeds down, throw your E, it deals damage, and then the second one deals damage, and you get some health back. 
And so it's very good. You know, going through solo dungeons, just hitting that on multiple mobs with your mercenary jacket allows you to sustain. If you need a cheaper offhand, rock the torch. Otherwise, if you want to spend a bit more money, the Moizak is really good for the uh, bonuses with this. Um, it just really makes everything worthwhile for spamming this build. Very, very strong solo build. You'll see a lot of people using this or bear paws, just clearing solo content, going into static dungeons, going into corrupted dungeons, going into mist, going into the open world, doing every kind of content with this build because it is so strong and such a staple build. Now, if you're doing PvE content, you want to swap things up. You could swap out the Hunter Hood for a Spectre Hood. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, a Spectre Hood, basically when you use the ability on a Spectre Hood, it allows you to reset your armor ability. So if I use my Bloodlust and I did my thing and everything, I could then, you know, you see it's a 60 second cooldown. If I had Spectre Hood, I pop that and I immediately get it back. So it keeps the sustain going if you want that option. Uh, you could also, for this build, rock Kellyan Jacket instead of the Mercenary Jacket if you're doing more group content, if you wish. And they definitely rock the Avalonian Cape for this build. And yeah, these were the four beginner builds I highly recommend. It's going to get you through a lot of content as you learn this game and figure things out, figure out your unique play style and how you want to do things and change it up depending on what mode you are. They're very good, can be used in a lot of content to help you learn this game. If you like this content, please sure to like and subscribe, and I will check you all next time. Peace out.